Welcome to the Campbell TV studio here in Bowie's Creek, North Carolina for our Camel Conversations featuring impactful student athletes on campus. I'm Evan Budgervich. We're joined by NCAA All-American Andrew Morgan, who won the Southern Conference Championship this past year, but your spring season was cut short before the NCAA Championships. What was the toughest part of not being able to compete in those NCAA Finals? Um, yeah, it was a crazy, you know, few weeks. We went from the high of SOCON to, you know, getting like a two, three days off, you know, starting to train. Um, I believe it was the, the Thursday before the NCAA tournament. So we were going to leave that next Tuesday, and it was Thursday. Um, obviously, we heard the swirls, I think, the day before the NBA season was cut, um, all the other big sports. So we kind of had a feeling, but we were just like, hey, it's so close. Like, they might just push it through. Um, I think the Wednesday they went no fans. So we were like, how are our parents going to get there? People with tickets, you know, crazy. Um, and we were middle of practice. And I remember we just finished kind of hard drill. I remember Coach said we had one, one thing left. Um, you know, I'm just locked in the zone, a little oblivious to what's going on. And finally, I like, you know, read the room, start calming down from practice, and uh, one of my teammates, Corbin Mink, is just is starting to cry. And I was like, it happened. It, it's done. Um, you know, because Corbin, his favorite team is the Minnesota Vikings, and that's where the NCAA tournament was going to be held, was in that stadium. So, you know, he was the most hyped the whole year for this. Um, and then Coach Cole, I just gave one of the best speeches I've ever heard just about the ups and downs of his career. Um, for those of you that don't know, he been robbed four times at the World Championships and Olympics. Crazy story. Um, too long for this conversation. But uh, so once you hear from a guy like that, it really kind of does put it in perspective. But I mean, we were all crushed. I mean, it, it's hard, especially we had, I think, four seniors on the team at the time who, you know, that was their last last go and uh, they never got the chance. So yeah, it was, it was crushing for sure. The biggest thing was the growth. And that's why I love, you know, we were senior heavy, but it was guys who had been with the program from you know, day one, for the most part, you know, I came in that second year. Um, Gonzo came in, I think, the third, fourth year. So it was just, you know, cool to see the growth of the whole team and kind of capitalize, you know, with being a number 12 ranked in the country and finishing with five uh, All-Americans. Your name itself and the whole program really came on the map when you guys went to Phoenix, Arizona, and beat Iowa State, very competitive with Arizona State. How did that day change the perspective of the program? It, it was huge. It was so big. Um, that's what kind of put us, solidified us in that number 12 spot. I think Iowa State at the time was number nine, and we, we upset them. Um, I think it was huge. You know, we had a really a tough schedule, but no big dual matchups till that weekend. You know, we had Pitt early in the year that I believe they were top 10-ish. Um, you know, we just had a flat showing against them. It was early in the season. We didn't really know how to do our warm-up correctly. We were on the road. Um, so, you know, we're getting used to all those factors. So I think that match was a big turning point in our season where you know we got our butts kicked a little bit against Pitt but we rebounded built it throughout the season and then we were just just ready going into that match um, you know Jason Kreiser stepping in as a true freshman his first match in the lineup gets a pin on his birthday funny enough um, so that's our running joke on the team is every day is his birthday when we compete um, you know just fired us up with a pin um, Chris Cobra pulled his red shirt took one for the team and bumped up to 97 when really he was an 84 red shirting uh, won a big match for us, and then uh, Giorgino, our heavyweight, closed it out with a, I mean, a top 10 win, I think. So that was just like, you know, I think kind of solidified us as, you know, a th perennial top, top 15 program. You mentioned the senior heavy program. You yourself won 93 matches here at Campbell. What was the match that maybe stood out the most in your career? Oof. Um, uh, if I had to lean on one match in my Campbell career, I think it was my match against Pitt. Like I said, we had a rough showing to the team, but I actually um, had a pretty big match where I upset. I think he was number six or number four in the country at the time, returning blood round. So um, he lost in the round to place at NCAAs the year before. Um, and I think that was it, it was a match that almost solidified to myself. I finally, you know, I belong with the best kids in the country. You know, I knew it for a long time, but I think finally you get that big win to get over the hump. It was like, all right, I've, I've arrived. I'm ready. Um, you know, I could, I could win a national title this year. So th I think that was the, the big match for me. What does it take as a wrestler to go from being, having the mindset of being a champion to then being able to finish the deal and win the Southern Conference? Uh, man, that's, that's a great question. I think confidence is huge. Um, I think maybe that's something I lacked a little early in my career in the sense of, I knew I was good, but I don't think I, I really had the national champion mentality of I could be a national champion this year. Um, you know, I think it progressed to where I was like, oh, I can beat NCAA qualifiers. 
I can beat all Americans. And then I got to that point where it's, oh, no, I can win a national title. And I think once you get that mindset, it opens a lot of doors for you. And I really think, you know, being a senior heavy team and, you know, all of us going through that progression, um, you know, none of us in the lineup were necessarily big recruits um, coming out of high school. So we all developed over college and got to that mentality where I think everyone in our lineup, especially the seniors, knew they could be a national champion that year. And I think that's what made the switch, um, you know, and why we started crushing the Southern Conference competition. What did it take for this program to go from being a bottom dweller in the SOCON to having themselves in the national picture year in and year out? Um, I mean, mentality, like I was saying, definitely just having that championship mentality, knowing that you can win a national title, that, I mean, unspoken goes so far. Your training partners, I think we brought in the right guys. We had the right culture. Um, everyone was training to be a national champ. So when you have guys like that pushing you, um, you know, if you're not performing at your weight, someone's going to step in. Um, so it, it's good to have, you know, that, that mentality of, uh, of you got to be one step ahead of the guy behind you in your lineup, someone pushing you. Um, and I think we were just a big family. I think we all hung out. We all lived together. Um, we did everything together. Uh, you know, a lot of people say during wrestling season, no one sees the wrestlers because we're all just hiding in our houses, cutting weight and all that. Um, you know, but it's like you're in the foxhole with your guys. You know, you're in the trenches. Um, and I think that builds a really tight bond. And so I think that having that family atmosphere goes a really long way with your culture. One of the areas we saw that family atmosphere was at the Southern Conference Tournament, where you guys would bring extra wrestlers and fans and to have that camaraderie. How does that empower a wrestler when they're competing in front of so many people? Oh, it's, it's so much fun. There, there's nothing more fun than the Campbell crowd going um, you know, to tournaments. That at SOCON, um, you know, it's kind of a big arena, so not all the seats are filled. Uh, so our wrestlers will go to the mat where the person is wrestling and sit right front row, be uh, yelling for them, you know, respectfully, you know, heckling a little bit just because that's, that's the fun of it. You know, you've got to create that atmosphere, um, you know, being kind of the new kids on the block the last four years, uh, winning SOCON so many times, you know, we're all, everyone wants to see a Campbell person lose. So getting that atmosphere of, you know, the, the good and the bad, people yelling at you, people cheering for you is just, is so much fun. And, and those wrestlers really make it you know, the fun atmosphere. Um, you know, probably my favorite memory on the, on the campus was that App State duel this year. Um, atmosphere was electric, fans were into it, rival fans, App State fans were there. Um, you need that. I think it's huge to, you know, have, you know, the, the good and the bad pushing you. Um, and it was just, it was so much fun. You mentioned beating App State to win the regular season title. Describe that rivalry with App State and Chattanooga, your two big rivals. Um, it's, it's heated. I think it is definitely, um, you know, there's some, some competition. I don't know if I'd call it friendly competition. It, it's a rivalry, but I, I think it's really good for the SOCON, you know. As a whole, we're not the toughest conference in the country, but having these rivalries, um, something to look forward to in the season, you know, little high points to kind of get you amped up for the, for the year, because um, especially, you know, NCAA season is so long, six, six months, uh, not counting preseason, which is another two. I mean, you're training all the way through second week of March, third week of March, so it's so long. Um, that having those little things to get up for, I think really uh, makes it fun, makes you train harder, um, and just kind of pushes you through those, those tough points in the season because you know App State's working, Chattanooga's working, and hey, they've beaten us some of these past years in these duels. So um, if we slip up, they're, they're right there. So I think it just gives you that little edge. This past spring, of course, you won the conference title yourself personally and the team. How rewarding is it to be in Boone and to be able to lift that conference trophy? Oh, it's, it's so huge. There's nothing better than, you know, winning at individually, but also winning as your team. Um, wrestling is an individual sport, but the team aspect, I think, is huge that people don't really understand with wrestling. Um, and you don't really understand until you go to a dual meet or something. I, I always get people that say, like, I didn't know wrestling was that, that much fun. Like, I don't know what's going on, but it, it's awesome. Um, so, you know, winning with the team is big. Everyone, how we always look at it is you, if you do your job, the team's going to succeed. So, yeah, on the mat, you know, warming up, all that stuff, we're selfish. But, you know, I, I remember I finished my match, and right away I'm watching, watching the next match, watching Jer at heavyweight, watching Corbin at 25, who had a huge match. Um, and we're right there cheering, yelling. I mean, ideally I'd be right next to the mat if they let me, because um, that's the fun part, you know, cheering for your teammates, you know, after you do your job, of course. For you personally, the story is kind of unique this year because you're entering a possible sixth season, going through some legislation with the NCAA, to try to earn that final year back of eligibility. How impactful would it be to be able to get that opportunity to compete again? 
Yeah, it's uh, it's crazy. It's been a, a whirlwind um, ever since I transferred here. A lot of long story about transfer getting denied. Um, so I, it'd be huge getting another year. I mean, I've always, um, maybe not in the best way um, for my uh, career, always just looked at the positive side of it of, oh, I'm going to get the year. Like someone's going to do right by me. Um, obviously, that hasn't been the case as I haven't been granted my year yet. Um, and that goes into a whole conversation just about the NCAA um, and how they treat student athletes. But my Campbell experience couldn't be greater. Um, and I want nothing more than to, you know, get one more crack at it for this school, for the program, uh, you know, and ultimately for myself, you know, going on six years in college, um, training, grinding every day, um, especially after having last season cut um, and another season's taken from me. So I've had two seasons uh, where I haven't got to finish it out. Uh, so getting that opportunity would, would just be huge. Um, and I really do think I win a national title for Campbell, uh, you know, get our second All-American, get our third with other guys on the team and win the first national title. You mentioned trying to win that national championship. You were an eighth overall seed, so right in line to be an All-American if the season finished out. What is that feeling like just of being in the moment and being someone who can actually compete for a title and not just someone who goes to a tournament but can make it a run? Yeah, definitely. I mean, being in that, that situation was a culmination of a lot of years of effort. Um, was finally in, in a spot where I thought, you know, win a national title at eight seed. Um, you're going to run into the one seed in the corner, quarters who I'd, I'd wrestled earlier in the year and didn't have my best showing. So it was one of those matches I really wanted back, was hyped up for it. Um, you know, and we, train, we train all year for it. Yeah, I mean, we, we try and win every single match. It's not like we, we uh, are only training for, for March, but obviously that's the culmination. Um, that's the national title, so it was just so exciting to finally be there, know I belonged, and know I was in a position to win a national title, um, and just kind of put all that training, you know, finally in, into gear, into line. Regardless of what happens with your eligibility, you are pursuing your master's in a four plus one program in accounting. What has pursued you into those interests? Uh, I mean, uh, it's, the, it's the Campbell way, it's the business school, really. It's, it's funny, you know, when I was looking into transferring and, and all that, um, my mom actually was 100% Cal Poly. She was from the day that was an option. It's a great school, you know, relatively close to home, which wasn't a huge factor, but just a great school, like, go there, go there, go there. So when Campbell became an option, I was looking in. I was almost nervous to call my parents because I was like, oh, it's going to get shut down. Why, why even ask them? Finally call them, like, hey. This whole situation's going on. I'm actually looking at, at Campbell, blah, blah, blah. Um, she's like, all right, let me, let me go on. And my mom is a private investigator of that stuff right away on the computer. So she looks and she's like, oh, this, this business school, they have a trust and wealth program. Oh, they have a four plus one option. You get your MBA. Like, we, we should look into this. This is, this is good. I was so surprised by that. So I started looking in. Um, and that, you know, right away with wrestling, you, you usually do five years with your red shirt. So I was going to be here for five years anyway for school. So why not make the most of it, get the MBA, a few extra classes, um, not, not a big deal. And then with this sixth year and my, my weird situation, I was kind of up in the air about what I was going to do academically. Um, but then I heard about their starting this one-year Master's of Accounting program, um, which worked perfectly in line. You know, I'm going to be here for another year. Why not tackle that? Um, make it worthwhile to be in school for a year, you know, not taking some nonsense classes, some PE classes or something that doesn't matter. Why not? You know, something that could further um, my career, if, you know, if I take it into the, the business world. You mentioned the individual nature of wrestling. Where does this motivation come from, for your standpoint? That's a good question. I think part of it, a lot that gets uh, underestimated with wrestling, is people um, think it's all about, you know, winning, winning, winning. Which, yeah, w uh, winning's nice, for sure. Obviously, we, we train to win. But part of it is just the fear of losing. I, mean, I just hate losing. I'm so competitive. Pe People know who I am. I'm sure my, my girlfriend would say, like, I just hate losing in anything. It could be, you know, ping pong. It could be whatever it is. No one likes to lose. And I think that's a big um, jump compared to other sports with wrestling, seeing how it's so individualized. Um, they're just ultra competitive because you can't blame it on someone else. can't blame it on your, you know, your offensive line or my shooting guard missed the three. You know, it's all you out there. Um, and I think that's what adds that extra kind of competitive layer is it all falls on you. But then when you win, you get all the glory. So it's, it's a, it's a trade-off. So that's why, you know, the work you put in directly correlates to your success. And that's why I, I love, you know, wrestling, that individual aspect. You competed under Kerry Colat, an Olympian for the United States, and maybe one of the most competitive people on this planet. <laughs> Describe <laughs> to me that back and forth when you're training with him and also trying to compete with him. Um, I mean, training under him was, was the best. I couldn't ask for a better coach to, you know, 
organize the culture of Campbell and to push us. You know, he's one of those guys when he says something, there's no talking back. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. You know, he's done it. So when when he says something, it, that, it's that it's that way or the highway. You know, and 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 it's good in the sense of um, I think everyone just falls into line. You know, and and then once you get you get the older guys in that, you get a culture going. It's just the younger guys just follow the older guys. I think really this last year. Uh, Carry got to be re really hands off with the team, in the sense of he all the you know we were six six seniors five seniors whatever it was, on the team they they all knew what they were doing, so he could really kind of be hands off. So when it came to you know warm ups for the for the matches and everything, he was like, hey, do what you guys need to do. You guys know by now what you need to do. Um, if you need to warm up for 30 minutes or you need to warm up for an hour, you know that's on you. If you need to come in two pounds over for warm up or come in a half pound, you know really on you. So I think. In that sense, he was hands off, um, and it was just you know reeling us in when we needed it and kicking us in the butt when we needed it. What do you think was the most impactful thing that this senior class was able to accomplish? Um, whew. that's a loaded question, but I think, like I said, it's the culture. Uh, I think right now, you know, we brought in a lot of guys. We're a little bit younger, seeing how we graduated a good amount of guys. So I think just that class that graduated put in that culture of being a you know a perennial top twenty team winning SOCON every year, that's a must. Um, I think putting that culture in place and putting in the culture, you know, of just busting your butt every day and, you know, you get in what you put in, um, I think will line, you know, the Campbell culture for years to come. Well, Andrew, we certainly hope you can compete this upcoming season, but certainly an All-American year is a nice way to wrap it up if that is the case. We really appreciate the time. No, awesome. Thank you so much. I appreciate it.